Who would have known this many years later now, okay, as part as part of uh, shows and podcasts that we get to lead the Dan Patrick Show with? Man, LeBron was nice. The Lakers can't stop John ja Morant. Like you, you wake up. We're two days before a new year, and what do you think of of the Lakers? The Lakers can't stop John ja Morant. The Lakers can't stop anybody. Anybody. And, and that, that to me, that's the biggest problem. Is it's almost unbelievable LeBron at his age can do what he's doing and they're still losing games the way they're losing them. Like, you're up the entire game and then you can't – they couldn't buy a buck in the fourth quarter. Like, I'm watching the game, Doug, and it's just so frustrating. The Grizzlies, you know they're going to go to John Morant. Can somebody slow him down or just force somebody else to beat you? Force somebody else to beat you. Okay, we can't stop John Morant. We're going to double him, and we're going to force somebody to beat us. No, you let the best player beat you, and then you score 16 points in the fourth quarter. 16 points in the fourth quarter. Carmelo, he didn't have a good game. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well. After shooting the ball extremely well, I believe it was Monday, he shot the ball well. And, yeah, I mean so, they, they beat they beat up on the JV from Houston on Monday, but he he shot the ball well. Carmelo didn't play well. Mm-hmm. Westbrook had a triple double, but I don't know. It was, you remember late in the game, he had a layup, he missed it. And I'm like, oh man, but I, I believe it's the 16 points in the fourth quarter, and not being able to stop the best player when you know the best player. It's killing you at this point. But it's been our problem all year. We can't play defense. Well, there's there's a bunch of different layers to it. Obviously, still playing without um, Anthony Davis. He's a, he's a, he is a game changer, no matter how poorly he shot this year. Let's also remember, when he's right, that guy's pretty good. The problem is, how often injured is he? And then there, there's, a, there's a chunk of quasi-starters, bench players that still remain out. The issue is that if you want to say, hey... They're without and, – and, and when you're starting LeBron at center, that's why you're going to give away so many shots at the rim because he's, it's not what he, he's not a rim protector. Um, he never has been, and he definitely isn't at this point in his career. But I, I think the, the bigger thing is that most of us feel and – and you tell me if I'm wrong. Like, you watch the Chiefs going back to when they were struggling some, and you're like, all I got to do is take what the defense gives you – and they're still going to be really dangerous because they still have Tyreek Hill. They still have Travis Kelsey. And boy, if they just kind of start to slow somebody down, it, it didn't feel like it was that far away from the Chiefs. You know, there's just so many errors that they had made that you still had a healthy respect that at some point they'd figure it out. And sure enough, they figured it out, right? And I know I'm relating football to basketball, but it, it doesn't, you don't feel like, okay, we well just bring Anthony Davis back and you'll be fine. No. It, it doesn't feel that way for the, for this group. And it's, it's interesting because so many people have pointed out the age thing. Heck, I, point, I remember when they're signing all these guys and I'm on uh, my show, on the Doug Gottlieb show on Fox Sports Radio. But, but my point then is the point you've just made, which is we get hyper-focused, and we're right, and you're right, that the older the player, the more likely they are to, to, to break down, or maybe not even break down, but get worn down. Yes, you want older, you need veteran players to come in and make a shot in the playoffs, make a shot in the finals, figure it out kind of on the fly. The problem is that in order to get there, you need consistency. But the bigger issue is when you're not young and you're not athletic, you can't guard anybody. And the, these dudes, they went from, the Lakers went from the best defensive team in the NBA two years ago to a, a very average defensive team who really struggles in guarding the ball. And that's kind of what basketball's all become is about the ability to contain the basketball. And if you can't contain it, you got to have a rim protector and they don't have either. The Lakers hindsight is 2020 made a big mistake in letting Caruso go. Yes. He gave them extreme effort on the defensive side of the basketball. When, when you watch games, how many guys really put in the effort? F- forget about just stopping the guy. How many guys just give you effort on the defensive end of the floor like he did? You think and say, oh, Avery Bradley? Outside of Avery Bradley, 
Who else does it? They they don't have any. And Avery Bradley is older. And if you're going to have an older roster, I said this the other day, these guys got to give you maximum effort, and they just got to play less minutes. They got But deep, LeBron goes for 37 points, and you're still losing because in the fourth quarter, the legs are worn out. They're tired. They can't knock down shots, and that's obvious because they scored 16. You haven't stopped anybody all game. You're really not going to be able to stop Memphis, and they're a young team. Their best player is extremely young. Something They got to figure this out. I don't understand. Just Somebody has to have some type of accountability and say, I'm going to leave the charge on the defensive end of the floor. It has to be Westbrook or LeBron, two best players on the team with AD not playing. Somebody has to lead the charge. You would hope that would have been AD when he was playing defensively is going to be my calling card. And he was part of the problem as well. I mean, even if AD was healthy, they would still be losing because when he was healthy, they're losing. TJ Ospinzada, Doug Gottlieb in for Dan Dennett's Dan Patrick show here on Fox sports radio. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those where um, we're just in a weird place with LeBron where I do think, I don't, I don't know. I, I, um, I can't figure out, um, how we're supposed to treat the scoring now, right? Like, you're like, wow, you're scoring. But the whole idea, LeBron's whole thing has been like, yes, I score, but it's all about winning, and he can't make this team win. Is this and, why and can't people don't want to play with LeBron? Huh? Because Is this why people don't want to play with LeBron? Because as, as you see, both of us, we're, we're somewhat absolving LeBron of any but, type of blame, and we're trying to find – Everyone else is this could could this be a reason why? Oh man, I go to LA yes, and play with LeBron. Of, we don't win. Course, I'm getting of, blamed. Of of course, but I also think that if we're honest, I mean, like, look, he's not nearly as good defensively as as he used to be. But if you're going to put up 35 a night and 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 he's start he's playing far more. Like he's been offensively or scoring wise, he's been he's been he hasn't been the problem, you know. And but yes, you're right. That's the way it works with LeBron, which is. When he wins, it's about LeBron. When he doesn't win, it ain't about LeBron. It's about everybody else. That That is the way, in fact, it works. And I think that's one of the weird things where Laker fans are, I still don't feel like LeBron is a is viewed as a Laker. It's still a weird kind of mercenary type of relationship between the fans and, and Team LeBron, more so than the fans and, and like the Lakers. And and the sad part is the only player that someone may want and you can bring an asset back to help is Taylor Horton Tucker, and he's not playing particularly well. And so I don't know where they go from here. They got to figure this out. But, like, just the game, man, if you just remember the game, LeBron started off so well. At one point I was like, man, LeBron's not going to miss a three. He was on fire. And then you get towards the end of the game, he starts shooting threes because they're losing or the game is close and he's trying to keep up and keep them in the game. And I believe it was like eight for 14. But at one point, he was six for seven. And I said, oh, we're going to win this game. We go up, I think, by 16 points. And then here comes Ja. It was like, oh, they better put A.B. Bradley on Ja. They better start double teaming him. And LeBron had a great game. But Ja Morant, he outplayed him. And that's what somebody in their early 20s who was sending to a superstar is supposed to do. Well, he also, I mean, like, like if Ja Morant's 6 or 7 from 3, there's, there's not a lot of things. You're, I mean, you, if he makes his jump shots, there's not a lot you can do because that guy has, he has like bionic legs going to the basket. It's, it's, it, it's freaky. All right, let's, 